Thank you so much for joining us. And for those who I haven't had the chance to speak to yet, welcome to Southern Cross University's Open Day. We're really excited to see all your shining, lovely faces here. And we're really excited to be joined by an amazing panel tonight. Um, so my name's Ellen. I work at Southern Cross University. And I would like to acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Goombenga people and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Within and without the buildings, this land always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So we've got 25 minutes to chat tonight, which is going to be a lot of fun um, with our fantastic panel. So what I might do is get all of our panel members to introduce themselves and explain your connection to Southern Cross University. So we'll start with you, Josie. Okay, my name's Josie and I'm a final year education student. I'm studying early childhood and primary. Um, I'm also the president of SAGE, which is the student advisory group for education, which is on Facebook. And I suggest all new students join because it's a great way to interact with other students. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of connections with the uni. I also work for Study Buddy, which is a great resource for students where you can go and get some help from other students with all your assignments. So, yeah, there's a lot of connections and things that I have to do around the uni. So that's why I'm here tonight. Thanks, Josie. And yourself, Peter? So, well, I'm Peter uh, and I'm the principal at Coffs Harbour High School. And uh, before that, I was principal at Grafton High School for 10 years. Um, my association with... Um, Southern Cross Uni, I suppose, is I'm a current um, doctoral student, so I've uh, completed my confirmation. I'm in that part of a doctorate where you're doing the research for a doctor of education. And before that, I uh, worked through my Master of Education through Southern Cross Uni. Awesome. Thank you so much for making the time to be here tonight. We know how busy our teachers and principals are at the moment, so thank you very much. And Michael. Hi. Uh, yes, my name's Michael. I'm uh, the current principal of Sawtell Public School. My association with the Southern Cross Uni, I'm also a, a current doctoral student uh, doing my uh, research, uh, well, hopefully, to do my research in educational leadership. I um, used to be a tutor here back in the day, so I was moonlighting here doing uh, tutoring in mathematics and PE, and I'm also a, a previous student of Southern Cross from Lismore. That's a few years ago now. I'm a... Current student and previous. I did my Bachelor of Education at Southern Cross in Lismore too. Yeah. And Melissa, would you like to introduce our, yourself sure. to the panel? Um, so I'm, my name's uh, Dr Melissa Wolfe and I'm a senior lecturer here at Coffs campus and I'm also the course coordinator for design technology and secondary. And I'm fairly new to the area and I just love being here at Coffs. It's great. It's, um, I'm a Melbourne escapee. <laughs> we had a few of those during COVID. We love it. And it is. It's a beautiful place to live and work. So, Melissa, can I start by asking you who an education degree might appeal to? How are the degrees structured here at Southern Cross? And what study options do students have? Okay. So, three questions. So, the first question is... Um, if you like kids, it's great, a great job to be a teacher. If you don't like kids, don't be a teacher. So you've got to like children, number one. Um, secondly, I think you really need to – if you're the sort of person who likes to work with young people and uh, expand their breadth and depth of understanding and opportunities in the world, then it's a great um, profession for you. And also, if you have leadership skills or would like to develop leadership skills and are really intent on building community, because teaching is all about community building, um, then teaching is for you. So that's the first part of the question. So the second part is what are we offering here? So there is a Bachelor of um, Education in Early Childhood. So that's a three-year um, course which you can do and that will um, qualify you to teach in preschools and early childhood settings. Then you have uh, the Bachelor of Education, which is a four-year course, and you've got five specialisations you can choose from, so quite a wide range. So you've got early childhood and primary, primary, uh, primary and secondary, secondary, and design technology and secondary, which is um, what I'm the course coordinator of. So quite a, a wide breadth there for you to choose from. You can also... Um, go on and if you already have an undergraduate degree, you can do a Master's of Teaching, which is a two-year full-time uh, teaching degree, 
on top of your Bachelor of Arts. Of course, that's subject to NISA requirements as far as your subject area is concerned. Um, but we have some experts here from our client services, um, Danielle and Oliver. So if you're interested in that and you want some more information, please ask them. The other thing is too, to think about, you can actually um, access the courses through different pathways. So if you have TAFE qualifications and you're interested in coming to do a teaching degree, there are opportunities for you um, to do that. So again, you need to um, access client services to find out. There's also a Masters of Education. So if you're a teacher and you want to expand your professional knowledge, then maybe that's for you and it's a part-time two-year uh, course. And that can also lead to a PhD um, because it involves research. Um, one thing I do want to mention is if you are doing a teaching degree, then you also have to sit the land tight. So the land tight is um, the literacy and numeracy test that all teachers in Australia have to actually pass before they can become teachers. So that's um, really important that you acknowledge that. And here at Southern Cross, you do that before you go onto your professional placements. Professional placements, okay. When do they that was start? my next question. <laughs> Should I just go on? Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about placement or prac as we sometimes call them? What they look like, where students might go and at what point in the degree they would go on a placement? Okay, so placements vary. Um, for the three year um, Bachelor of Early um, Childhood Education, placements pretty much start straight away because you actually get to go in and observe in your first year. In the Bachelor of Education, the four-year course, all of those, um, your placement doesn't start till the second year because of the NISA requirements for you to do your um, subject disciplines before you actually do the pedagogical approaches to teaching. So when you um, go on your professional placements, you actually are going to schools, you have mentor teachers, you have instructions, um, you have somebody there to support you and you also have the wonderful PEX team at Southern Cross. So the PEX team here is a professional experience team and they find you a school, they set up your placement and they let you know when you'll be doing that placement. Um, you might have to travel a little ways but they do really try and place you close to home if that is at all possible. Um, so that's the scenario. If you're doing a uh, Masters of Teaching, you also will be doing um, some professional placement in your first year, it's only the two year course. So you have to start that straight away, but you've already got your subject discipline. So that's basically um, that scenario. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Melissa. I'm gonna throw to you now, Josie. Can you tell us what your experience has been like studying at Southern Cross and what you've absolutely loved or enjoyed most about the course? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm studying early childhood and primary. So I have that mix of, of age ranges. And uh, the things that I have really enjoyed that I've actually been able to compare to uh, people that I actually went to school with that are studying teaching at other universities is how real some of our assignments actually are. They are things that you can actually use right when you go into schools. So at the moment, I'm actually lucky enough to be this lovely principal here has let me into his school. And I have actually been teaching, I've been teaching a three, four class um, hydroponics um, using recycled materials. And it has been so exciting to be able to write this lesson plan that I needed to do for an assignment, but then actually go into the classroom and teach it and see the excitement and to come back for the second lesson, because it's a three um, lesson plan, and have the teacher tell me, the kids have asked me every day what day you're coming back. <laughs> so to actually be able to write that lesson, but then to use it in the classroom is really amazing. And it's something that, um, yeah, this friend that I have, it isn't doing that. So some of her courses are, are quite sort of out there. She's done zoology, which I'm sure is very interesting, but it's not something she's going to use in her primary classroom. Whereas I've done lesson plans for art and I've done lesson plans for PE and I have done things that I have actually used. So 
um, so, something that I actually use literally today because a, a little known fact is you can actually go and get your teaching license and work as a teacher in your final year. So once you click over to your final year, so even though it's a four-year course, three years and you can start making money, which is pretty exciting. So today was literally my first day as a paid casual teacher and I went in with a book that I had written a lesson plan for um, in my English course and I hadn't been left work. So I was able to go, I've got this book and I know what to do with it with this class. And so having those real skills that you can literally walk straight into casual teaching and go, I know what to do is amazing because it's all well and good to have done assignments, but we know we're here because we want that job at the end. We're not just here to write on bits of paper. So the courses that we do and the assignments we do actually have that real world context and it's not just oh I just had to do that for uni it's I've now got a folder of things I can use when I'm a teacher and that's definitely the the greatest thing that I found about about coming here and and yeah being able to compare that to other people I know who don't have that same level of practicality um, made me so glad that I've chosen to come to Southern Cross. That's awesome, Josie, and congratulations on your first day of teaching. Thank you. How Thank did you, you. find it's very it? Exciting. I, I found it fantastic. It was so exciting, and and having the the practicals that we have here, and having the experience, I could walk in going, I know what I'm doing, which on your first day of any job is not normally a feeling you have. So yeah, being able to have that experience and walk in with confidence is yeah, it's wonderful. That's fantastic. Um, in your degree, were there any elective options that you got to choose from? And if so, how did you sort of navigate that? So for mine, because I'm doing the early childhood and primary, I don't actually have any electives because um, the spaces that are filled with the electives in the straight primary course, I'm actually doing early childhood courses. So the early childhood actually has a different curriculum. So it's a lot of learning about the different curriculum that they use and how they plan because it is a, a different style of teaching. But my husband is actually, um, he's studying at Southern Cross as well. So he's doing straight primary because little kids are too little for him. So um, he, he does have some electives and he's actually chosen to be a, a science or expert, I suppose you can say. So yeah, you, when you're in the primary, you have those options where you can say, you know, I'm really interested in maths and then you can do extra maths courses. He's decided that he would uh, really like to find out about science. And so he's done some very interesting um, things about science and learning different things that, um, yeah, he's been able to, uh, to elect to learn about which is great. And it's it's a fantastic option for those who just want to do the um, the straight primary because if you're not interested in maths, you don't have to do that extra maths. But if you are interested in science or there are some people that are doing extra art courses, there are quite a lot of things you can pick. And a lot of the time, depending on which stream you pick to actually um, get your specialisation, you can actually pick anything from that the uni has on offer. So there's, yeah, a huge range of things that you can pick from if you do have the, the streams that have the electives. Yeah, and I know a few friends of mine even did subjects like operating a drone or ocean photography as well. So if you do have that interest, you can um, draw some of those more niche or creative subjects into the degree um, if you're doing the straight primary degree as well. Thank you so much, Josie. It's so interesting to hear how things are going for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I might throw to you now, Peter, and I ask this with, you know, it's, it's a big question and it's very topical. Um, what kind of demand is there at the moment for teachers? <laughs> uh, well, um, there's a there's a major demand, especially I'm going to say in high schools. I think there's a demand across the board. Uh, there's a demand in high school, and certainly a demand in certain specialist areas in high school. So you talked about science, so science, maths, and the technology area. So my background, I didn't say uh, I'm actually what you'd call a TAS teacher, technological and applied studies is the key learning area that that fell under. And so my background was industrial arts so and computing as well. And um, so that area, there's there's a demand there. And obviously that's one you can train through in at SCU. But um, maths teachers, definite demand for maths teachers and a definite demand for science teachers. But the, in general, there's a demand for teachers. So the good news is that when you uh, are able to, and I did casual teaching in my final year of university, which um, I thought was incredible experience because it felt very, well, it was real and you're paid for it. But um, certainly 
whenever you finish your training, your degree, um, you're not going to have problems getting work. <laughs> I can say that for certain. Thank you. And I'm just going to throw a curveball at you. What um, what sort of qualities do you look in teachers when you're looking to employ them? So I was sort of joking about this. I'm not going to tell you what the joke was about because the reality is that um, in education, y- y- you do have to have a – you've got to have personality. I know that sounds you- – you've got to be able to relate to children. So you've got to have a love for it. Children need to know – like there's, there's the old saying, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And, and ki- kids want to see in you that you're a real person, you're genuine and you care about them. So you've got to have a love for your job. You can't fake it, all right? So it's not a job you do just because there's perks that you think are great about the job, right? Um, you know, the holidays are great. Well, that's a bit of a myth, right? <laughs> but the reality is that uh, you've got to love your job. You've got to love teaching kids, right? I love uh, kids and I love working with uh, high older kids, right? I get a lot of um, satisfaction out of watching that development of older children as they become adults, you know, and, and watching them move out into, you know, into the big world. And so if you don't love that, it's the wrong job for you. And you've got to have a sense of humour too. You've got to have a really thick skin and be able to to laugh off the real, the difficult times and, and come back the next day. And it's, that's not in a bad way. It's, it's, a, it's a positive thing. You've got to be resilient in all of those things. If, you, if you're not that, then it's probably not the job for you. Yeah, that's really great insights. Uh, thank you so much. Other than the classroom, where might a Bachelor of Education take someone? Gosh. Um, it's a, I don't know if that was one of my questions. I'm going to have to try and think of the answer to that. Um, it's funny. I, I, can, I can add to that. You, you might be able I, – I can give you my my answer and then we'll see – you can give us the correct one. So Sounds mine will great. probably be wrong. <laughs> um, All answers are correct. But it's 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 interesting because of the skill set. So I, I – I, unfortunately, I know people who've left teaching or left teaching degrees and gone into other training jobs and, and other sort of jobs where you work with people. I mean, the reality is – it's around you've got to be well organised but you've got to be able to work with people and and uh, there are lots of jobs in, in the corporate world that are around training and, and even adult learning. I mean, when I started teaching, I actually taught night school and I taught adults how to do woodwork at night school. You know, it wasn't the children and, and I had peop- uh, quite elderly people learning how to do woodwork and, and I also taught computing at night school and had quite elderly people learning how to use computers. It's very different but again, if you love sort of um, teaching people like that sense of imparting knowledge and people learning and the satisfaction of seeing them master something, then there's a whole range of ways that you can do that. And the other thing I'll say is it's good to come into teaching with other experiences and bring that into your teaching. So I came to teaching as my second career. So um, I think that enriched my teaching experience as well. But there's probably a better answer than that. That is a great answer, but I've got some more to add yep. to it. Um, so I think um, I've got a lot of people that I know who work in education policy. So you can work for the government um, in the department itself um, and that's there's a lot of spaces in different sections you can go to there. There's also all these educational programs across all sorts of areas. So you could work at the zoo and be an education officer there. You could work at an art gallery. You can work at a museum. So there's uh, a library. There's all these places that have – who – have a demand for education specialists so um really um yeah you can work anywhere (laughs) that that was a great answer can i add to that of course but we need you in our schools (laughs) we need you in our schools no no we do i'm going to go back to it and say look i I know people have worked for new south wales forestry and education have worked for museums you know um but it is good, I think, to get that experience working with kids in a school, have a good understanding of curriculum, which you'll get as part of your degree, uh, so that you've got some basis for that when you're working in those areas. Yep. Yeah, that is yeah, fantastic insights. Michael, what do you enjoy most about the career? Uh, look, I think the diversity, ultimately the diversity of the career. Um, for me, I've been teaching for 29 years and it's taken me right across the state. I've never been anywhere longer than five years, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I am a local from Coffs Harbour, so when I say I've never been, uh, I've never stayed anywhere uh, longer than five years, I've actually never stayed in a particular school for more than five years. I've had a stint out at Lightning Ridge. I've, um, I've been at Carora, which is just over the hill here. I've had uh, time at, at Bellingen. I've had time at Boambi. I've had time at Tormina. 
I've had time at, at where I am currently now at Sawtell. So certainly the, the diversity, um, obviously the kids, the kids, is what, you know, it's what we're there for. Um, and, uh, you know, watching the growth, seeing the growth, building the community um, and, you know, just the camaraderie of, of uh, what you'll experience with, with your colleagues when you're out there. So it's a beautiful career. Yeah, and I can't think of a career that would be much more rewarding than teaching. Absolutely. Um, I, I haven't been in any other careers, unlike Peter. Peter's started somewhere else previous. Um, but teaching is a very rewarding career. Uh, and I, you know, I've, I actually, I've got four children of my own and, and two were very close to being teachers and I was so, so excited to hear that that's what they wanted to do um, and they sort of uh, pulled out at the last minute and I was disappointed, quite, <laughs> quite disheartened. I bet. So you've got a room full of people who are thinking about becoming teachers. If you could leave them with one piece of advice or wisdom, what would that be? I, I could leave you with, how long have we got? I just saw five <laughs> minutes before. Um, look... First and foremost, I might get shot for this, but I'll say it, join the union, first and foremost. Um, secondly, when you walk into a school, be a sponge. Listen, um, take in everything you can, put your hand up when you need some help. Please put your hand up when you need help. Don't, don't be a hero um, and we're all there to, to support one another. That's the, you know, we see burnout, especially in teaching. Uh, it's, burnout's a big thing at the moment. So we need to be leaning on each other and supporting each other as much as we possibly can. Yeah, and I think that's a great question to finish on because I can see all our other panellists <laughs> look like they have something to add to that. So I'll throw to you now, Josie, a bit uh, of yeah, advice. Yeah, definitely from a student perspective, something that I've picked up on um, being in the uni and also mentoring other people um, is it's that, especially when you're straight out of school, is my best advice is just remember that you've gone that next level. So you are now learning to be the teacher. You are no longer the student. So, so you've got to step up that next level. I've had some students come on their first day and say, I didn't get a book list. What pencils do I buy? How many pens do I need to bring to uni? Uni doesn't tell you that. You're that next level now. You're learning to be the teacher. So you need to think for yourself. If you like to take notes on, an, on a notepad, bring a notepad. If you like to type your notes, type them. If you just want to bring your phone and take a picture of the blackboard, you can do that. So it's up to you and how you learn best. But there is so much help at uni. Southern Cross, I strongly suggest signing up for a uni mentor. That's a student that's further ahead than you that can help you. I strongly suggest coming to Study Buddy. It's an online service that you can drop in from 12 until 3 every weekday and there's students like me who are doing well at their studies who can help you. We can look at your assignments, pick up where you've gone wrong and help you to improve or any questions you have, even if you're just stressed and want to chat, that's what Study Buddy's there for. There, you're entitled to a half an hour session once a week with um, an expert who can help you go through your assignments. There's so much help but you've got to reach out and do it. There's not going to be a teacher looking over your shoulder saying, where are you up to on your assignment? They just tell you when it's due. If you need help, you need to go and get it. But it's there. So look for it and you can get the help that you need and you can all succeed. That's great. Thank you, Josie. Uh, Peter, any last words of wisdom from yourself? I'm going to say something for secondary people. So I'm hoping there's someone here that wants to teach in a high school because a lot of people say they want to work with with younger children in primary school and I, I really want to push that that high school is still very rewarding and don't don't judge the job based on necessarily your own experiences but um when you when you're working in high schools and and probably my biggest bit of advice for an an early career teacher or students doing a prac there's not a lot of age difference between you and the students that you're teaching and that's a big difference in high schools and so it's really important I, I call it the three f's you need to be firm with students you need to be fair with students and you need to be friendly with students but not familiar with students and that's a bit of a trap sometimes for younger teachers, early career teachers. You do need to be firm, fair and friendly but not familiar. So that's my advice if you're looking at doing that and going out into high schools. That's awesome practical advice. Thank you. We are almost out of time. So I would like to thank our amazing panel members. Can I just say one yep. thing? Because I haven't. Yep. And I did teach for 20 years. So just in a secondary school. 
So I just want to say that teaching is a fabulous career and you cannot imagine where it might take you. So do it. It'd be great. And apply now. So our expert study advisors are in the front room. If you need a hand with anything from applying to enrolling or accepting your offer, please call into that front room um, on your way out. They would be more than happy to help you. Our beautiful panel members and client service staff are going upstairs to the student lounge now. They'll be around for about 10 to 15 minutes to answer any specific questions that you might have for them. So thank you very much, panel. Thank you very much, audience. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their evening evening and make sure if you haven't already um, submit that application tonight while you're here and we're all here to help you. Thank you.